There have been a lot of Mega Man games over the years, and for those of you who haven't been keeping up with them this whole time, that shit probably gets confusing. I mean, these games all take place in separate universes, or at least in very spread out timelines with little to no overlap. You've got the Classic Series, the X Series, the Zero Series, the ZX Series, the Battle Network Series, the Star Force Series, and Mega Man Legends. But some of these series do actually overlap, and that is what I want to talk to you guys about today. Namely, Classic, X, Zero, and ZX, which I guess you could call the main storyline of the Mega Man universe. There's a pretty big time gap between each of these series, usually about 100 years, and what happens during two of these time jumps can pretty much be explained in some way, but it's the very first one, the 100 years between Mega Man Classic and X, that still has no explanation and is by far the most mysterious. What makes this period of time so interesting is not only is there no mention of what actually happened by any of the characters or even Capcom, there's no sign whatsoever of any of the classic cast at all. I mean, it's pretty obvious that any human from that period is dead, or at least their body is. Is, but there were plenty of robots, super fighting robots mind you, that should still be alive. So what the F happened? Where are they? Well over the years fans have come up with quite a few theories. The first one we'll address, the Cataclysm Theory. So there are these scenes in Mega Man X4 where you see Zero dreaming or having visions or acid flashbacks or something, in which he's approached by an old man who's clearly Dr. Wily, who refers to Zero as his masterpiece. And to Zero he says, After him. He is my nemesis. Our rivalry is what gives me motivation in life. Now go, destroy him. That's an order. Now when Mega Man X4 came out in 1997, the internet was still a wee toddler and information wasn't being explosive diarrhea all over the place. It's not like some guy came up with a cataclysm theory and posted it to Reddit and everyone was just like, oh my gosh, wow, that's genius. Why didn't I think of that? No, because everyone did think of it. I know I did. So what is the Cataclysm Theory? It's the theory that by creating Zero, Dr. Wily finally succeeded in creating a robot capable of defeating Mega Man, and he sent him off to murder everyone. I mean, it seems fucking obvious that that's what happened from the dream sequence. Wily literally says, go destroy my nemesis. There are also some quick scene flashes of blood all over Zero's hands and a bunch of robots ripped to pieces. So, alright, cool, we figured it out. Except not. Because in a 2008 interview, Keiji Inafune, the guy who invented the Mega Man game, said, No, Zero did not kill them. According to the way I created him, Zero is not such a person. It is not in his profile. <laughs> not in his profile? <laughs> not in his profile? Just look at this crazy fucker. I mean, it seems like he might kill someone. I was always a big supporter of the Cataclysm Theory. It just made too much sense to me, and I had this really epic vision of Zero showing up to Dr. Light's lab to confront Mega Man, and this insane battle ensuing between this veteran hero with approximately 100 special abilities at his disposal, and this brand new state-of-the-art killing machine. I always imagined their battle lasting for hours, with Mega Man trying every single trick in his arsenal to stop Zero, but in the end just being completely outclassed by this unstoppable force of destruction. But I guess not, so whatever! I mean, when you think about it, Inafune's response is a little underwhelming. I think there's still a shadow of a doubt. Maybe he didn't understand the question. Maybe the translation was bad. I don't know. But for now, we just have to accept that no, Zero did not murder the entire cast of Mega Man Classic. So then what the hell else could have happened during that 100 year period that caused the entire Classic cast to disappear without a trace? Well, there's a pretty logical conclusion you can come to that makes enough sense, but it's a little underwhelming. Simply put, the technology used to create Mega Man and the other robots of that era became obsolete. Just think about how quickly this has happened with technology over the course of human history. We made the first flying machine a century ago, and only 60 years later we landed a man on the moon. Compare a cell phone from 10 years ago to the ones we have today. The rate at which technology advances seems to increase exponentially, and we're very quick to scrap old technology because of just how quickly it becomes obsolete. So what if it's as simple as that? The robots of that era all just broke down and got scrapped. It's a theory that I've seen a lot of people mention, but I don't think that's what happened for a few reasons. The most important one being that it's fucking boring. But honestly, it doesn't make sense. There's one thing that disproves this scenario entirely, and that is the journal of Dr. Kane, which can be found in the instruction booklet of Mega Man X. Dr. Kane is an archaeologist, not even a robotics guy like Light or Wily, who lived 100 years after the events of Mega Man Classic, and he's trying to verify his findings about some Mesozoic plants or some shit no one really cares about. Well, he stumbles upon Dr. Light's old lab several meters underground, and within it he finds a capsule containing none other than Mega Man X, who's been undergoing diagnostic testing for the last 100 years. When Dr. Kane wakes X up and examines him, he describes X's design to be a quantum leap ahead of anything the world has ever seen. 
Just from that little bit of Dr. Kane's journal, we can infer many things. First off, when Mega Man X is discovered, he's a 100-year-old robot, and Dr. Kane considers him hella advanced. I mean, if the top-of-the-line technology 100 years before that was Mega Man, at the speed at which technology moves, it doesn't seem like X would blow anyone's mind all that much at this point. And X is old anyway. Technically, he was top of the line 100 years ago, he just didn't see the light of day. So clearly technology didn't advance at all since then. In fact, it seems like it took a step back. A big one. When Dr. Kane took X back to his lab to study him, he used X as a blueprint to create a whole series of robots called Reploids that basically revolutionized the world as they knew it. I mean, shouldn't that have already happened like a hundred years ago with the original series? Well, maybe it did, but somehow it seems like everything got wiped right the fuck out. Call me crazy, but I think it's safe to assume that the technology used to create a robot like Mega Man died with Light and Wily, and quite possibly much of human civilization. Whether it was a huge robot war or just a good old asteroid becoming crashed into the Earth, one thing's for sure, shit got buried. Think back to Dr. Kane's journal. The clues are everywhere. So the dude's an archaeologist, right? And he's trying to dig up a fossil record, but happens to dig up a lab. I mean, it's only a 100-year-old lab. Things don't just get buried several meters underground after a century. If that were the case, a lot of the buildings in a country as young as the United States would be underground. Not only that, but you have to consider the setting of the classic Mega Man series. It's gone by a few different names over the years. Monsteropolis, Mega City. Regardless, Light's lab is always depicted as being in a huge futuristic metropolis, which means that Dr. Kane didn't even know there used to be an entire fucking humongous technologically advanced city where he was planning to dig. What the hell happened? On top of all this, if you watch the Day of Sigma OVA from Maverick Hunter X on PSP, it sort of looks like the story takes place in a giant city sitting in the middle of an otherwise desolate landscape. Notice how the edge of town just sort of leads to nothing? Whatever happened, it left the remaining humans with no concept of the technology that existed a hundred years ago, or any record of the existence of Mega Man who was basically a freaking superhero. Really, the only explanation is that Mega City, or whatever part of the world the Mega Man games actually took place in, was cut off from the rest of humanity and didn't communicate in any way or share technological intel, because eventually something went BOOM, and all of it was lost and forgotten. This is the most likely scenario I can come up with. Mega City was completely isolated and self-sustaining. I'd guess it was a massive metropolis much larger than any city in today's world, and it was smack in the middle of some kind of enormous desert or desolate uninhabited area, somewhere where an archaeologist might think to discover some fossils. So all the Mega Man games take place here, and the rest of the world basically has no idea what's going on the entire time. You know, they're just sitting at home playing with 8-bit game consoles and easy-bake ovens or something. Now at some point, Mega City gets completely buried and forgotten. There are plenty of natural disasters that could accomplish this, but the thing is, it's only Mega City. Because if humanity itself was completely annihilated, Dr. Kane wouldn't have had the technology to go on an archaeological dig and successfully excavate X, so the technology had to be at least as good as modern-day real-world technology, so the rest of the world had to have been fine. And with the way things were going, with Wily and Light constantly at war, methinks somebody made Mega City go boom and buried everything. And I don't mean to jump to conclusions here, but it was probably a losing Wily. It was his reset button. If you watched last year's Mega Man Theories video, this will sound familiar, but Wily already had all his plans in motion to attempt to dominate the future when he would no longer be alive. He had his masterpiece, the killing machine known as Zero, lying in wait in a capsule hidden away. He had a virus ready to be set loose on the machines of the future, and he had a means of transferring his own consciousness into an artificial intelligence so he could see his own plans through. All that was left to do was bury everything. And it all comes full circle. Did I just blow your mind? Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. I really love doing this kind of thing, exploring unexplained theories within video games and kind of coming up with my own spin on things. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section. If my theory makes sense, if you have a theory that makes sense, a theory, theory of your own, even if it doesn't make sense, I don't care. Most comments don't make sense. So, I mean, that's fine. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned to my channel because there's a lot more Mega Man March goodness coming your way. I'm really excited about this month. I've got a lot of cool stuff planned, so this is, this is really just the beginning. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click that button, or I will kill you! Bye.